Hi folks, Matt Easton here. So recently I put up a video showing melee games that are having in our, uh, in our club skirmishing between uh, groups, sometimes between four separate groups, sometimes between two groups. And uh, one of the comments that came up a lot and everyone went, ah, who's, who's the person dual wielding? Well actually there were several people dual wielding. Um, I was dual wielding and I imagine that I'm the person that you can see quite often on the camera dual wielding. But uh, there was also Chris from my club and I think a couple of other people had a go at dual wielding at various points as well. And what's the big shocker about dual wielding? It's perfectly historical, okay? Go and look at uh, Morozzo Manchelino. Dual wielding is absolutely uh, historical to um, at least the 16th century onwards in Europe. It's shown in, in the Bolognese um, treatises and uh, what's the big deal really? And in fact, not only was dual wielding done uh, in the 16th century with side swords, we know that uh, from earlier historical records that it was done occasionally as well in, in the earlier Middle Ages, but additionally it was done all over the world at various times. We know that um, certain people in India used two swords together, sometimes two pata, sometimes two tulwars. Um, dual wielding in terms of mismatched weapons, obviously sword and buckler, sword and shield, done all the time. Sword and dagger, very common. Some of the daggers used in the left hand were very big. Katana and wakasashi, uh, pair of pair of swords in Indonesia. All over the world, dual wielding has been done. It's no big deal, guys. Now, in terms of why to dual wield in those melee games, because remember, this is an unarmoured melee games, so it's kind of civilian situation, where no spears are involved or no pole arms are involved and there are only a, one shield on each side, there's only a pair of shields, okay? If large shields were allowed, large shield would be a far better choice than two swords. So why did I choose to, to dual wield? Very simply, because having two swords is in that situation better than having one. Would I choose to dual wield in a one-on-one -on -one fight? Probably not. Um, I've fought dual wielders with a single sword, both use where I've been using long sword and I've been using sabre. And personally, I would stick to what I know best, which is either using one long sword or one sabre. Um, and in that situation, I don't think dual wielding has such a big advantage. But where you're fighting multiple opponents, and sometimes you want to hold someone at bay here whilst hitting someone over there, dual wielding is really advantageous and that's why I do it. And if you actually look at the video again, you'll notice very often the thing in the left hand is being used more or less defensively. It's essentially being used as a shield. Um, whilst I'm really only hitting most of the time actually with my sword arm, with my right arm in my case. Okay. Now that equally is very historical. There are sources, um, for example, the Gurkhas used to use a, a rifle or musket in their left hand as a parrying device, uh, whilst using their cookery in their right hand to strike with. Equally, we know that there are ver various types of parrying stick. Uh, this is all aside from the dual wielding with swords, which we know is done all over the world. Um, and of course, shields of various sorts. Now, just to emphasize again, if everybody had been allowed to have large shields in that sparring, I absolutely would have cho chosen large shield and sword, okay? Obviously. Equally, if pole weapons had been allowed, spears, halberds, whatever, I would have picked one of those, okay? And possibly I would have picked a spear and a shield. Um, so very simply, dual wielding with two swords does make sense in a very specific scenario. If you can't carry a large shield, then having another, another weapon in your left hand to parry with, be it a buckler, another sword, or whatever, does have lots of benefits, okay? But a large shield is better, but you can't always carry a large shield, as I mentioned in lots of my videos. Equally, a spear is, generally speaking, better than a sword, better than most types of sword. Maybe not a big Zweihander, but better than most normal sized swords. So if you can have a spear, of course you have a spear. But the simple fact is that in all scenarios, in, in whether it's in history or even in modern scenarios, you just, you just can't carry a large shield and a spear around with you all the time, whereas you can carry a sword and a dagger or a sword and a buckler, 
okay? So it all comes down to context, guys, and you always need to think, if you see someone dual wielding, or see someone using a sword and buckler, or see someone using just a sword alone, you have to ask yourself, why? Why is that person using that weapon set? And the answer is always in the context. Okay guys, cheers!